Uh, good morning and welcome to church. My name's Tim McIver. I'm the minister in the Anglican parish of Blackheath. Uh, but this morning I welcome you uh, from a great variety of churches in the upper mountains, from Wentworth Falls all the way out to Mount Wilson. Uh, I won't mention our denominations, I wouldn't like to leave anyone out, uh, but suffice to say we gather from a broad and beautiful array of churches. Uh, also welcome if you've stumbled across us on YouTube or Facebook uh, or a church website, uh, you are very welcome here uh, this morning uh, or whenever uh, you've found us. Uh, the Upper Mountains Ministers Association had originally planned that we would gather uh, in a slightly more gathered sense. Uh, we'd plan to cancel Sunday services and meet together as one to celebrate Pentecost. Uh, I know some people in my church, myself included, uh, were nervous about not holding a normal service uh, in our building uh, for just one Sunday. Uh, well, didn't the Lord have a surprise for us all? Uh, today is, of course, Pentecost Sunday. Uh, this service is to be a celebration and reminder that we are all one in Christ. Uh, we remember uh, when those first believers gathered all together in one place, when God sent his Holy Spirit upon them uh, to empower them to do his work. Uh, we also look forward to a day when we will gather once again, uh, first of all in our churches, but more importantly, uh, complete together around the throne of God singing his praises. Uh, in this morning's service, uh, we're going to open the word together. Three local ministers are going to proclaim the good news of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to sing. Uh, there's going to be something for the kids. And we will, of course, spend some time speaking to our Father in heaven, bringing our requests to him. Uh, we're also going to see uh, this morning uh, what several local churches have been doing uh, during the pandemic uh, to serve the local community. We'll watch uh, some videos on those things. Uh, but why don't I begin uh, by praying? Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we might gather in your name, albeit online this morning. Father, we first of all want to thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for his death and resurrection, that our sins might be forgiven, that he might be our King forever. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, and we pray that he may be at work in us today. Speak to us by his power, Father, as we open your word. Father, please hear our prayers. May your church be built up and encouraged through today's service. Amen. I'm going to hand over to the Blackheath uh, Baptist uh, worship team and we're going to begin in song. In the darkness he will wait in Without hope and without light Till from heaven you came ready There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt
move for good for the land that conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in up to the souls of all to come to the Father our soul and the church of Christ was born and the seal and lit the flame now the skies of truth alone shall I kneel and shall not faint by his blood and in his name and in his freedom I get free for the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me I believe. 
the saints communion and in your holy church i believe in the resurrection when jesus comes again for i believe in the name of jesus and i believe in god our father i believe in christ the son i believe in the holy spirit I'm going to ask now uh, the kids to make sure that you can see your TVs or your iPads or whatever you're watching on. Uh, we're going to have a little video about Pentecost, especially for the kids. Hi everyone, my name is Jordan. Today we'll continue to look at the awesome book of Acts. And Acts reminds us again and again that, see if you can do it with me, the mission of the risen King Jesus cannot be stopped. And today, we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 2. Last week, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we heard of Jesus' mission. Jesus' mission is that people all around the world would hear that Jesus is the King. And Jesus' mission is that people all around the world would accept Jesus as their King. But after Jesus told his followers about that mission, Jesus left. Oh, it's all over. It's all over. Everyone, this is my friend Oswald. Let's all say hi, Oswald. Oh, yes, hello, but Jordan, it's all over. Oh, Oswald, it's okay. I know Jesus may have gone back to heaven, and so it looks like it's all over. But it's not, because Jesus promised to send the Holy uh, Spirit. What's that got to do with my milk bottle? What? Oh, this morning when I was making breakfast, I wanted to pour milk on my cereal, but the bottle's empty. Did you drink all your milk, Oswald? Uh, no, no, it's got a hole in it. Okay. Oh, anyway, what were you talking about? Well, 
Last week, we heard that Jesus had given his followers the mission to tell people all around the world that Jesus is the King. Well, well, his followers must have been very big and brave to spread Jesus' message all around the world. Well, the problem was they weren't big or brave. What, really? Really. This is Peter. I can't see anything. Oh, hang on, let me put that down there. Uh, uh, Okay, so who's Peter? Well, he was one of Jesus' friends. Okay, but why is he scared? Because when we last saw Peter in the Bible, he was scared. Oh, but why? Because everyone had turned against Jesus. Oh, yikes! When we last saw Peter, Jesus was about to be killed. And Peter was worried that if he told anyone that he was one of Jesus' friends, then everyone would turn against him as well. So when people asked Peter, are you one of Jesus' friends? Well, Peter got scared and said, no, no, I don't even know Jesus. Oh, no, Peter didn't do a very good job spreading Jesus' message, did he? No, he didn't. And then Jesus was killed. Oh, then it looks like Jesus' mission can be stopped. Well, it looked that way, but then... Well, well, that's Peter. But why is Peter happy? Because Jesus had come back to life. Peter saw Jesus alive again, and Jesus told Peter and his friends that they would have to tell people all around the world of the risen King Jesus. Wait, wait, Peter? But Peter's already messed up once. If it's left to Peter, then the mission of Jesus will be stopped. Well, Oswald, you're right. If it was all left up to Peter, it would be stopped. But Jesus said that Peter would have help. But really? Really. Jesus promised to send the gift of the Holy Spirit. Gift of the Holy Spirit? Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God who comes to live in everyone who trusts Jesus. Oh, but wait a minute. How's that going to help? Well, that's what Acts chapter 2 tells us. You see, in Acts chapter 2, Peter is with all of Jesus' other friends when the Holy Spirit comes on each one of them. Oh. And as soon as this happens, they all start shouting praise to God in different languages. Languages from all around the world that they could not speak before. Incredible! Well, this got a lot of attention. Mm. Thousands of people came to see what was going on, and guess who spoke to them all? Who? It was Peter! Peter? The the same scaredy cat Peter, who couldn't even say that he knew Jesus? The same one. The Holy Spirit gave Peter the power to tell everyone of the risen King Jesus. No way. Yes way. And when everyone asked what they should do, Mm. Peter told them in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Yes, thank you. And 3,000 people did that that day. They repented and were baptized and became followers of King Jesus that day. 3,000 people! Oh, my word! (laughs) Yes, that's right. The Holy Spirit helps those who trust Jesus tell others about Jesus. Mm. Well, you know what? The Holy Spirit sounds a whole lot better than my holy milk bottle. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Oh, you know what? I should go find a non-holy milk bottle. That is a good idea. Oh, Oh, you know what? I could go straight to the cow. What? Oh, that's a great idea. Toodaloo, everyone. (laughs) Okay, bye, Oswald. So Jesus' mission is that people all around the world would hear that Jesus is the king. And Jesus' mission is that people all around the world would accept Jesus as that king. And today we've seen that the Holy Spirit is the one who helps that happen. And the Bible tells us, that anyone who trusts Jesus has the same Holy Spirit living in them as Peter did. And the Holy Spirit helps those who trust Jesus tell others about Jesus. The Holy Spirit is why, see if you can do it with me, the mission of the risen King Jesus cannot be stopped. Don't forget to sign up at www.quizworks.com forward slash home delivery where you'll find even more awesome ideas to help you and your family be a part of that mission. See you soon. Our uh, purpose is... Uh 
to support families in the community that are really struggling, uh, most on fixed incomes, many with uh, disability, some with uh, you know, uh, health problems, uh, and of course some, uh, a lot of people we are supporting is family uh, mothers and we help uh, victims of domestic violence as well. So we're providing so food subsidies hey, for people who are really struggling to put food on the table okay. yeah. for a basic purpose. And what we've got here That's set up is um, we're doing drive through at the moment, but we normally do it in the park. And so we're just packing bags that we, we supply for them. Mm -hmm. um, and we just fill up the bags and give them some bread. You see the bread over there. And uh, the baker's delight. The bread comes from them. And, uh, food comes from Christ Mission Possible. Yeah, so um, we're going to start really that it's a great outreach to so, so many people with what we're going through between the bushfires and then we have, you know, the flooding uh, in other parts of Australia and then now with the whole thing with COVID, the, the community is really looking for a place to connect with people. And so, we really enjoy doing the food portion of it and being able to hand out food to what people need. But also, there's a whole aspect of community development and just just being with people, even though it's 30 seconds or, or two, three minutes in a car, you know, you still have that connection that people need, that, that friendship or that time to outrage, time to connect with other people. So that's, that's really been the biggest thing for our lighthouse and for people in our congregation is to, to reach out and just connect with people during this time. Um, we've had an increase, uh, a dramatic increase. Normally we were feeding in the park about 30 to 35 families. We're well up in the 60 mark now and heading higher. And so we, uh, uh, two weeks ago we had 80 people. Yep, I'm taking more than I need. My name's Brian Bartlett, Auxiliary Lieutenant. Um, Core Officer of Upper Blue Mountains, Team Member Blue Mountains. We're preparing hampers to distribute to community members that are feeling the pinch of COVID-19. Today we've got potatoes, sweet potatoes, cabbage, capsicum, onions. We've got some limes, zucchinis, bananas, beans, lettuce, tomato, um, a selection of pastries um, and some bread. Um, we also have some wonderful um, local businesses that have been cooking meals and donating them so that we can put them into the hampers for those that are maybe not well or isolated and maybe don't have facilities to cook but they can still have a nutritious meal. We've had an influx of volunteers that are either from just wanting to be on board on what we're doing or from been stood down from the position and they're wanting something to do. So um, we try to create an environment that here that is inviting not only for our community members but for people that we engage with our, with our volunteers. I'm an opti optimistic person but any optimistic person during a crisis like this can go bust. So, so I really thank Salvation Army for basically um, picking up my hand and then walking me through this difficult time. Oh my goodness, Hi! <laughs> How are you? I received some bad news from my workplace that I was no longer going to be um, needed while while the situation, um, COVID-19, was happening. So I fell into a bit of a hard spot and decided that, yeah, I wasn't going to feel guilty about uh, coming down and, and getting that first that first hamper anymore because I'm in a, in a spot where I, I too need to, um, need to reach out so that I could also help my family. <laughs> I've met some really lovely people and and it's just been a really lovely service and it, it has been helpful to have those food items as well. Um, it's been really helpful actually. So it's really appreciate what you've what you've done. So I really mean that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
If you'd like to take out your Bibles uh, and open to Acts chapter 2, uh, we're going to have a short reading uh, before Andy Collins comes and preaches to us. I'm reading from Acts chapter 2, 38 to 39. Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a cause for great celebration as we join together on this Pentecost 2020 to celebrate the, the coming of the Holy Spirit. As we look at this pivotal event in church history, I thought I'd look at it from the point of view of those first hearers what were they thinking when Peter said they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Yet the Jews related to the Holy Spirit as the comforter, not the, oh, there, there comforter, but someone who would come with strength. The word comfort means to come with strength. The Holy Spirit always comes with strength, power and great might. He was there at creation. Genesis 1-2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I love that image of hovering like an eagle, the most powerful of birds, waiting to turn darkness to light. And after the fall, we see the Holy Spirit continuing, continuing to come with power. It's often when God's chosen people have strayed from the Lord and need his strength. And we see when they're in danger of being totally destroyed by our other armies, we see the Holy Spirit coming down to deliver them from darkness and always coming with strength, swooping down like an eagle, destroying their enemies. And he does this by filling judges, by filling prophets, filling warriors with his presence. And as he does that, he gives them extraordinary power. We think of Samson able to tear a lion apart with his own hands to break free of ropes that bind him and killing a thousand enemies with a donkey's jawbone. But however, having achieved that victory, we see the Holy Spirit withdrawing again. And God's people, whilst they're initially energised to worship God afresh, it seems as time goes by that, that they just keep stumbling. And that's because the enemy of God's people isn't just human in origin. It has a much darker origin. And God has in mind a much greater victory. So we see by the time of the prophets, God is promising to do a new thing. And the Holy Spirit is there. Isaiah tells us that the Spirit of God will rest upon someone, this servant, this Messiah that will come. And in doing so, the Holy Spirit will help the Messiah to set people free once and for all. And we see this fulfilled in Jesus, don't we, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And at his baptism, we hear that the Holy Spirit descends and rests upon Jesus. And early in his ministry life, we hear Jesus saying, quoting from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 61, saying these words, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and we see all of this fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus tells us that scripture is fulfilled by him. And as a result, we always see Jesus constantly overcoming darkness, swooping down on the darkness all around him. And people are continually delivered from this impact of sin on creation. Jesus preaches the kingdom of God is here and he backs it up with powerful demonstrations of deliverance and healing. And just as the Spirit was there in the, at the first creation, he's working through Jesus to bring about the new creation. And through Jesus, God would have victory over darkness once and for all. And our God achieves the most powerful victory possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is there present in strength and power and great force, raising Jesus from the dead. And in doing so, sin, death, Satan, all the powers of darkness are defeated and disempowered. And from that time on, the promise is that anybody who calls on the name of the Lord in repentance and faith, 
They too are forgiven in Jesus' name and the gift of the Holy Spirit is theirs and ours to make us truly alive. I love the New Century version of Colossians 2, 13 to 15, where Paul writes, When you were spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were not free from the power of your sinful self, God made you alive with Christ and he forgave all our sins. He cancelled the debt which listed all the rules we failed to follow. He took away that record with its rules and he nailed it to the cross. God stripped the spiritual rulers and powers of their authority. With the cross, he won the victory and he showed the world that they were powerless. What good news. So Peter declares, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. We are promised the gift of, of the Holy Spirit, the one who is victorious always over sin, darkness and death, the very same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the comforter, the one who comes to empower us in so many ways, assuring us that no matter what happens to us, we have the presence of God with us at all times and allowing us to live lives that bring glory to his precious name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a gift. May we rejoice afresh that God has poured out his Holy Spirit on all people. He is with us and in us, as Ian Bartley will share. May that make a world of difference to how we live our lives in the here and now. And let's join with the Apostle Paul who says in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3, Praise be to the God of all comfort. Amen. Thanks, Andy. We're now going to have our second reading uh, from John's Gospel, chapter 14. The following reading is from, from the book of John. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I'm Pastor Ian Bartley from Church of New Life, and I'm just going to share about the Holy Spirit as our comforter. And uh, I'm looking from the Amplified Bible. The reading was from the NIV, but uh, just in the Amplified Bible... It breaks down that word comforter into a number of words that uh, we just want to talk about today. So um, the first one is, uh, number one, is a counsellor. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit as a comforter, it's talking about the counsellor. And, of course, we know that from the Holy Spirit we get the best advice. We need wisdom and we need uh, direction. And that's really what it's talking about, giving us the counsel, the counsel of God, to be able to help us live the Christian life that God has called us to live. The second one is helper. And, uh, you know, the thing about life is things do get in the way way at times. And, you know, we can get into trouble. We can get into all sorts of situations uh, that are awkward. However, the Holy Spirit is here to help us through our difficulties and through all the things that we are struggling with in life. He's our helper. So we've got our counsellor and our helper. But also the Holy Spirit, when it talks about the comforter, is our intercessor. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings connection between us and God. And so the Holy Spirit gives us that connection. And as we have that connection with God, we have that relationship with God and we build that relationship with God, which is very powerful. And the God that we're connected to is the all-powerful God, the all-loving God, Uh, the God who knows everything, the God who is all-knowing and all-powerful, and that's where we have the connection. And so the comforter brings out that, about God being our connection and being connected to God. And the fourth one is God is an advocate. And God here is uh, dealing with our accuser, which is Satan. And Satan is the one who likes to stand and accuse us of all kinds of things, tells us everything that's wrong with us, tells everything that's wrong with our lives and points out all the faults and all the fears and, and, and builds the fear up in our hearts. And so the advocate here is like a barrister. 
or like a lawyer who defends us. And the Holy Spirit is here as a shield to defend us. And so when we talk about comfort in that area, it's about him defending us. He's our advocate. Number five, it tells the word comforter there, brings out strength. And so God is our strength and our, and our refuge. And so the comforter here gives us strength to be able to get through life and to take on the challenges that uh, come our way. Of course, you know, the world's, the world's philosophy is, you know, only the strong will survive. But God's uh, teaching is that when I'm weak, he is strong. And so the Holy Spirit gives us the strength that we need to be able to overcome everything that uh, the enemy tries to throw at us and, uh, or life tries to throw at us, whatever it is. Uh, we have that strength. Number six is standby. And what that means is that God is standing by us. He is lifting us up and he's supporting us. You know, when we fail and when things around us fail, and we've seen, you know, the failure of everything around us at the moment. This is why we're doing this broadcast. It's because of the failures and uh, the failure of, uh, you know, uh, our world and, and uh, everything that's happening in our world and the breakdown of everything. But you know what? God is here to stand by us and to hold us up. So the word comforter here means to be standing by us and propping us up or holding us up, which we need. We need God to, to uh, undertake in that way. So that's... That's really uh, the important thing for us to know when we're talking about the Holy Spirit as the comforter, and he comforts us, okay? He says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. And the thing about the Holy Spirit is that when we are in desolation or when we're feeling desolate or when we're feeling bereaved or forlorn or grieved or helpless, uh, he's there to support us and to help us. So when we talk about Pentecostal Sun, Pentecost Sunday, we, we, we are reminded of the fact that Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit. He said, I will send you the comforter. I'll send you the helper. And he will come and he will help you. And he'll guide you and he will direct you. And so God has uh, fulfilled his promise. He's on the day of Pentecost, after Jesus' resurrection, he sent the Holy Spirit. And uh, he came. And he's here to uh, help us, to comfort us, to counsel us, and, and to uh, help us, and to intercede on our behalf, to be our advocate. He's here to stand by us and to strengthen us. And so all these things is, is, is wrapped up in the word comforter. It's all caught up in that word comforter. And uh, it's just uh, a wonderful thing that God has given us. It's a beautiful gift that God has given us of the Holy Spirit. And it's to help all of us as Christians to live the Christian life. And so we can sum it up on verse 26. If I go down to verse 26 in the Amplified Bible, I'll just sum it up here. It says, But the comforter, counsellor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall all that I reminded you and bring, you, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. So that's what the Comforter is here to do. And so we just praise God in all of that. Thank you. Bless you all. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Uh, Ray uh, from uh, Katoomba Anglican uh, is now going to come and preach to us from Ephesians chapter 1. Thanks, Ray. Well, I'm very glad to be part of this uh, Pentecost Sunday event today, even if it is virtually. And I've been asked to talk to you about uh, a couple of verses from Ephesians chapter 1, the Holy Spirit, the seal of the promise of God. Uh, there are those who think that it's actually presumptuous to say that you're going to go to heaven. Um, how can you be sure that you're going to go to heaven? Uh, it's a very important question. And so I want to encourage you to think about that today. Uh, can you be sure that when you die, the casket you're in will have a trick bottom? In other words, your body might stay there, but you will go to be with the Lord. For Christians, death is their graduation day. And it's a great reality that we can be sure about. We don't uh, have to be presumptuous about it. So let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14, and uh, see what it has to say. And Kathy's going to do that for us. 
And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Okay. All right, thanks. It is not presumptuous to think that you're going to be in heaven with God forever. God indeed promises it. The passage makes it clear. If you've heard the word of truth, the good news of salvation, if you've responded to that and sought forgiveness from God for the things you've done wrong, God does promise to forgive you. You make Jesus the Lord of your life, you're doing that actually because the Holy Spirit has convicted you of the truth of all of what Jesus said and did. Uh, and that he is indeed Lord of all the universe. And so the very fact of you committing yourself to Christ as Lord is a work of God's Spirit in you, and you become a marked person, marked by your commitment to the Lord. And so there are two things this passage tells us that the Holy Spirit does as he works in us. Firstly, he is a seal, a seal of ownership. Japanese artists will mark their work with a sign showing that it is their workmanship. The Holy Spirit, when he comes into us, changes us. He is God marking us to be more godlike, to be belonging to him as his children, to show that we are his workmanship. Uh, when you put a seal uh, on something, often on a letter or something like that, there'd be a particular mark there and it would be recognisable as a seal of the owner. So when the Holy Spirit comes into our life and changes us so that we start loving like God loves, serving sacrificially as God does, then that is a mark of our owner. And we are beginning to demonstrate traits of our owner. It's evidence that we are owned by God. So that's the first point, that the Holy Spirit, he is a seal of ownership, that we belong to God. Secondly, the Holy Spirit, the passage tells us, is a deposit. The Greek word there is arabone, which is the same word that is used uh, to describe an engagement ring. And just as an engagement ring is a beautiful thing, so when the Holy Spirit comes into our life and changes us and we start loving like Jesus loves, it's a beautiful thing to see in, in people's lives. The Holy Spirit, in fact, is a taste of what is to come. God has begun a work in us to make us more Christ-like. And as we go on in life and we allow the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us and become more loving and caring and sacrificial, uh, we are actually reflecting uh, the nature of our Maker. But uh, the Holy Spirit, in being a deposit, is more than just a beautiful guarantee. Uh, it's a, uh, he is a guarantee of the fact of what is coming for Christian people. Just as a ring guarantees a promise, so the Holy Spirit guarantees that he will complete the work that has begun in us. And so we've begun perhaps to be a little less selfish. We've begun to be uh, more faithful to God. Uh, that work will continue as, God, as we listen to God's Spirit and are guided uh, by him. So it's not arrogant or presumptuous to think that we're going to go and be with God in heaven forever because we are marked people with God's Holy Spirit in us and he is working that purpose out ultimately so that we might dwell with God uh, forever. God in us, part of our inheritance as Christians. It's a wonderful, wonderful blessing. What do we do in the light of that? Well, we live, verse 14, to the praise of God's glory. It's a story I like to tell, and people from St. Hilda's have heard it a few times. I was walking down the street in Katoomba, and someone said to me, would you like to buy a ticket for a house and a car, and would you like to win those things? And I said, uh, thanks, but no thanks, because I'm already rich beyond my wildest dreams. And the guy selling me the ticket was kind of looked at me a bit weird, uh, wondering what was going on. But it's true. Because I have God's spirit in me, because I belong to God, I am rich beyond my wildest dreams. I have an inheritance that will go on into eternity. I have God's spirit in us, a deposit, a seal, a guarantee, changing me to become more like Christ. That is my future. And so now I want to live to the praise of God's glory. 
So what does that mean? Let me, as I finish, encourage you uh, to live to the praise of God's glory in the light of the seal of the Holy Spirit you have in you. And we do that by becoming more like Christ, by listening to what the Holy Spirit says to us as he guides and directs us, by being more Christ-like. So this Pentecost Sunday, can I encourage you to live to the praise of God's glory. Let God's Spirit guide and direct you in all you think and do. And that Jesus, the Lord of your life, will shine through as you serve him every day. God bless you. Hi, everyone. This is Kristen and Emily here, and we're from the Lighthouse Church in Katoomba. We chose this song because I feel like we've just been through such turmoil as a society something we've never gone through before and we've never known such a need I think for God to be kind to us for God to bless us and I pray that through this song that you would feel and know that God is a God of grace and mercy and that his desire is to bless us and I pray that you'd receive that blessing as we sing through the Holy Spirit
gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. I'm Peter Dalbrin from the Lighthouse in Katoomba, and I'm going to lead us all in a, a closing prayer. Um, as I do that, I just want to read the scripture that echoes the words of the song we sang. So this is uh, in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 20 through, 22 through 27. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. I just thank you, Lord, for your blessings and, and your graciousness in our life. I thank you, Lord, that we are always in your sight, and you never leave us or forsake us. I thank you, Lord, that you're always causing your face to shine upon us. I thank you, Lord, also that on this day that we're celebrating the day of Pentecost, that we know that you sent your Holy Spirit as you have promised uh, in the Gospels, as you promised to your disciples, you did send your Holy Spirit and it was poured out on the day of Pentecost. We thank you, Lord, that it was poured out not only as our gift, but also to empower us to do the work of the Gospel. I thank you, Lord, that um, as described in the book of John chapter 14, the Holy Spirit is our guide. He's our comforter. He's our intercessor. He's our counselor. And he's there on standby, ready to work on our behalf. And I thank you, Lord, that even more now than ever during this time of COVID-19, during this, uh, this time in our communities where there's loss of jobs, loss of, loss of work, where households are, are struggling, where we're in isolation and social distancing, we just thank you, Lord, that now more than ever that we can rely on the Holy Spirit who is our comforter. We thank you, Lord, that you're always gracious towards us. We thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. You're always holding us, protecting us, guiding us, leading us. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit poured out as promised on us. We just thank you, Lord, for your face always shining upon us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to have one final song now. We're going to be led uh, by the worship team from Holy Trinity at Wentworth Falls. Let's sing Mighty to Save. Hi, we're joining you from Holy Trinity Wentworth Falls and it's Pentecost Sunday and we would love you to join with us in singing Mighty to Save. i
Thanks for being with us this morning, uh, or whenever it is uh, that you found this service. Uh, I pray uh, that it's been a benefit to you, Uh, and I also pray that we might be able to do something similar next year, uh, though perhaps uh, with a slightly more literal gathering, uh, all in the one place. Uh, Why don't I finish uh, by praying? Eternal God and Father, by whose power we're created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Many of you will know that the last couple of years at the Pentecost service, we've taken up a collection uh, because we intend employing a scripture teacher in Katoomba High School. Our plans are well underway. Uh, We haven't yet employed that person, uh, but we are going to take up a collection today. Uh, The details will come up on the screen shortly. But if you'd like to contribute uh, to the gospel going out uh, to teenagers in Katoomba High School, uh, here's your opportunity.